the data tells the story, FDI flows into Nigeria have come down significantly while portfolio investments are on the upside. Joining me in the studio to discuss this development is Bismarck Rwani, like you mentioned, CEO at Financial Derivatives. Thanks a lot, Bismarck, for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Wale. Right, so how, what's your take on this number? Because for me, the key thing, obviously, like everybody is, has alluded to, it's the slowdown in um, the oil sector and the PIB. But very interestingly as well, we've seen m significant flows into the equity market. Well, the truth is that this is a figure as of 2010. Mm. What was the condition of Nigeria in 2010? One, there was a president who was ill, there was succession problems, and then there was election coming up a year after. Foreign direct investment is more policy and political, politically sensitive, whilst portfolio investment flows, because they could exit at any time, are probably more, uh, more insensitive to such developments. So yeah. generally speaking, what are your broad expectations for this year? Do you think we're going to see a sharp uptick in, in those flows? More so definitely. than we have the elections. No, though. definitely. That's, that's the point I'm making is that the sick president has died, so that the problem of the uncertainty about who was in charge is no longer there. Elections have been held, and a new cabinet has been put in place. So based on those variables, and those are not the only variables, the probability is that you will see an increase in mm. foreign direct investment. Mm. And then where, sh where would this money be going to? Like, we, like I mentioned, the oil sector is yes, obviously are, hungry for investment. The oil sector, depending on the fiscal incentives that are put in place for the, um, by the PIB, I suspect the PIB is going to be cannibalized and passed in tranches. Mm. And if that is done, uh, we have a new minister of finance and who is a coordinator of the economic team. We probably see, once the policy environment is very clear and certain, you will see an uptick in investment, yes. Let's touch on that briefly. Like you mentioned, the new minister was sworn in yesterday. Yes. How would she drive this flow? Obviously, we need the capital. Um, Nigeria needs to develop. There's so much capital required, more so for things like infrastructure, etc. How does she make the case for those, for those investments to come in? No, definitely, first and foremost, her big strength is in policy. So she will just take around with the policies a little bit to make sure that they are consistent and that the momentum of policy reform is not stalled in any form. Mm. Secondly, she will try to coordinate and create a sense of fiscal discipline. Mm -hmm. but, th but the most important variable in our assignment is actually transforming the institutions because weak institutions, in spite of good policies and probably average leadership, with weak institutions, the long-term economic outcome is always negative or suboptimal. Mm. Let's touch um, the foreign portfolio investment flows briefly. And one thing that strikes me very clearly is the l sharp decline we've seen over the years in investment into the bond sector. And compared to 2007, we saw at um, as much as a billion going into bonds. Last year, data reflects that we only saw about $68 million going into bonds. It addresses some fundamental issues. Oh, it raises some fundamental issues. One, the difference between the rate of inflation and the rates of interest in Nigeria at that time, well, that is widest. The time when you had a huge inflow of uh, fixed income investments into Nigeria was when there was something near to positive rate, real returns during the Soludo days. Mm. When we started subsidizing the interest rates by, making, by ensuring that uh, long-term rates were lower than the rate of inflation, obviously, these investors have options. So they went to other places where there were positive returns. Mm. Now mm. that this has narrowed, now that inflation targeting is becoming more explicit than implicit, then we are likely, and now that you've lifted the ban on hot money, which is the short-term money, mm. we are likely to see that spike. But when you decompose those investments, if the bulk of them are in hot money, then it also poses certain risks which we have to actually mitigate. Yeah. And actually, the flow into bonds is what um, the uh, Monetary Policy Committee has actually alluded to as a deliberate strategy to cope with the weakness that we're expecting in Experience the in economy. The uh, it, to the extent that the higher interest rates and of course as inflation continues to come down hopefully um, we would see a lot more investments on the bond side to provide that support for the um, supply of demand so, so rather supply of um, fx into the fx market. no but I, I think that foreign direct investment is not just because of foreign exchange foreign direct investment is because of when it comes in it creates capital formation capital formation has an investment multiplier which leads to growth and sustained mm -hmm. growth and creates jobs i think that is that's the key thing a bond, a bond inflow, at best, is probably if it's, uh, it can always be discounted and pulled out at whatever time it is. It will help support the currency artificially for a, for a period. 
yeah. and uh, it actually has it has a multiplier effect, but its multiplier effect is much lower than when you actually invest in capital formation, where people bring in money as equity investment in building a factory, uh, exploiting a field in the oil sector, mm. or actually investing in real capital formation. Yeah. And for the equity markets, what are your thoughts? Um, one can argue that it's probably hot money we're seeing because the foreign investors are the ones dominating the market and we've seen a lot of volatility mm. over the last few weeks. No, the, the equity markets are down. What is happening is that it's looking for a trigger. They're really down. They're way below. I mean, we are at about almost 35% of where we were in real terms in 2007 right now. Most global markets have recovered all they lost in 2008, 2009 by this time, even though they are also choppy. Um, so these values are, these equities are really cheap. But when you decompose the equities, you find that some companies have actually increased their stock price and uh, market capitalization over this period, while the banks have taken a beating. Mm. I think that with sustained results next quarter from the banks, people will now see a lot more value. Some of the measures and acquisition you are hearing about will unlock this, and then investors, even though reluctantly, will begin to pile on and come into the market. So at, at the end of the year, you begin to see a recovery in the equity markets, but it's going to be a long haul. Yeah. Uh -huh. I guess fingers crossed on that one. Thank well, you so much. We'll see. All right, we'll see.